What exactly is tire doping or tire soaking and why do dirt racers do it? We'll get into that plus news from XR and more. Let's go. It's Tuesday, May 2nd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Back on the Friday show, we talked all about the penalties levied by the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series on James McFadden and the Roth Motorsports 83 team for a failed tire test following the feature at Peevely on April 14th. As a quick recap, the team has been suspended from four World of Outlaws races. They got fined $8,200. They've been DQ'd from that particular race at Peevely, and they lost 500 driver and owner points. The team is appealing the decision, and they are allowed to compete until a resolution is reached. That's why we saw them over the weekend at Tri-City and Hobstop. I was a bit surprised at all of the comments I got on the show asking about tire doping or soaking or prep or whatever you want to call it. I figured, I guess incorrectly, that most knew what that meant. So because I had all of those questions, I figured we could talk about it today. Following a lot of dirt racers, series officials will take tire samples, literally taking a chunk of the used tire, and they send those chunks off to a lab for analysis. What they're looking at is the chemical breakdown of the rubber itself. They get baseline or benchmark samples straight from Hoosier. They test those samples or those kind of benchmark pieces to get readings, and then they compare samples from the races to make sure they match or conform to the Hoosier baseline. The series get uh, sent back kind of a graph readout of the tested tires versus the benchmark. So you actually kind of see visually what the, you know, the kind of chemical makeup is of that tire versus what the sample is from Hoosier. And if they don't match, then the series can obviously institute penalties. It's really common in high level motorsports to have rules against altering tires. And usually when teams are busted, the penalties are pretty big. And so what exactly can teams do to the tires? There are a few things. The most common and what Roth got busted for was chemical alteration. The various products out there that can be applied to the exterior of the interior uh, of the tire to change its characteristics. So you can put it on the outside of the tire, you can put it on the inside of the tire. And there's everything from softeners or bite chemicals for added traction and grip to conditioners for added tire life over a long run. The hardness of a tire is measured using a gauge called a durometer, and some of these chemicals actually alter the physical makeup of the rubber to the point that they are softer on the durometer readings. In dirt racing, finding ways to grip really slick tracks is a big deal. It's something teams are constantly searching for. So you can see why someone using one of these types of chemicals would have an advantage over those not using them. And regardless of having heavy penalties in place, there are always several instances of teams being busted each season. In terms of the actual chemicals being used, you can buy ready-made products from the big parts suppliers. You can buy these from Speedway Motors or Barron's. You can even buy them on Amazon. And many of them have words like undetectable right there on the labels. So the companies that make these know they are often against the rules for the tracks and the series they're being used at. What exactly is in these bottles and cans? I don't know. And the makers aren't super keen on sharing ingredients. Uh, you're not going to find a, here's what's in this bottle uh, on the backs of these things. But they are often fairly caustic concoctions, which makes sense since they're physically changing the rubber itself. And there are those out there that make their own mixes as well. Nothing like a little race shop chemistry to kill some brain cells. Uh, there are other ways to alter tires as well, including things like needling to help control air pressures. But that's not really as big of a deal in dirt racing where bleeders are legal for a lot of divisions. Bleeders and needling are illegal, for example, in a series like NASCAR. So there's a little breakdown explanation of altering tires, kind of what teams can do and uh, what the series are testing for. There are all sorts of pseudo sciencey explanations and rumors and bad info from internet experts about how, how tires can become altered on their own or by aliens beaming down, but I'm not gonna get into any of that here. And the labs themselves that test the tires have also come under criticism, but I'll leave that litigation up to the super rational folks on the message boards and in the Facebook groups. What exactly happened with Roth and JMac? I don't know. I've heard all sorts of things. We know the team took and passed polygraph tests. I've heard a few possible explanations for what could have happened if they indeed didn't do it on purpose. There are rumors of some sort of free product being passed out recently at the track to teams, and that could have been the culprit. I also heard that Roth, uh, Roth possibly bought a pre-mounted tire that could have been treated by someone else. No matter the reason, though, they got busted, and now we'll just have to wait and see what the appeals panel decides. Regardless of how it happened, though, the teams will be held responsible for what's on their race cars. We don't have a timeline right now of when that appeals decision will come. We do know that the 83 and McFadden are on the pre-entry list for the High Limit Show at Kokomo on Wednesday. 
but we will see the team later this week. All right, I mentioned on yesterday's show that Carson Macedo is currently on a 21 race top 10 streak with the World of Outlaws. It's the longest current such streak for any of the major dirt racing series right now, and I wanted to provide you with just a little bit more context. Macedo hasn't had a finish outside the top 10 since a 12th at Port Royal last October. In the span of races between then and now, his worst finish is ninth. He has a win, seven podiums, and 13 top fives in those 21 races. The longest top 10 streak with the Outlaws since David Gravel went 26 straight in 2020. Looking at the DirtTracker.com analytics database, going back through the 2017 season, that's how uh, how many races I have for the Outlaws. We've had a few 20 plus race top 10 streaks. Brad Sweet's got a couple. Uh, his last was in 2019. Donnie Schatz is in that group uh, and Gravel, like I mentioned. Gravel actually owns the longest streak over that last kind of six plus season span. He went 31 straight top 10s in 2019. Uh, you can find all of this information and a lot more over at dirttracker.com slash analytics. All of these numbers and things that I find and, and that I use on the show are all available publicly in that section. And we're currently at 1,476 races in that database between the two World of Outlaws series, the All-Stars, Lucas, the Chili Bowl, all three USAC national divisions, the ASCS Extreme Midgets, and Eldora Late Model Special Events. That section of the website includes full race results. There's driver pages and a ton of uh, stat breakdowns. There's the usual categories, wins, top fives, top tens. There's also stuff that you'll only find at dirttracker.com. And if you want even more, grab a subscription to Dirt Tracker Plus for $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year. If you buy the year, you basically get two months free. That gets you access to the Plus dashboard, extra stat categories, and five uh, exclusive tools, including driver comparison. It's great for those of you that are playing fantasy stuff, pool players. Uh, if you're a member of the media, if you work for a series or a track, a lot of good stuff in there. You can click the plus link below in the video description or in the nav bar over at dirttracker.com. A little bit of news for you today. The XR Super Series made a couple of schedule changes here recently to a pair of events. First, instead of two Kokomo races this season, they've combined them into one event with a bumped up purse. Originally, the late model series was going to be at Kokomo on May 8th for 20,000 a win and again on June 12th for 20,000 a win, but they've dropped the May 8th show completely and then they pushed the purse for the June 12th race from that 20,000 uh, all the way to 100,000 to win. And this comes on the heels of the 100,000 to win race they ran a few weeks ago at Bulls Gap and that show ended up absolutely packed to the gills with race fans. The Super Late Model competitors will run, uh, run the week before at Eldora for the 29th Dirt Late Model Dream uh, and a possible $129,000 payday. They can then roll to Kokomo on Monday for another hundred grand. And to wrap up the XR season, the series has also added an extra night at Alltech Raceway in Florida at the end of October. They'll run dual feature shows for 5,000 win both Thursday and Friday, and then they've got 100,000 win on Saturday to close out the season. They're going to have 300 grand in purse money up for grabs over those three days, plus the $300,000 point fund. Uh, to see more details uh, on these news items, head over to xrsuperseries.com. There are three shows today on the streaming services. Dirt Vision has weekly outlaw cart action from Millbridge and Dirt Vision. Now there's also Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good Tuesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. 